Love you. Welcome back to the TMC Project. I'm here from Utah and excited to keep on going. Yesterday I wasn't able to get all the episodes done. Uh, the flight to Utah was, uh, nah, ADD kicked in and no matter how hard I wanted to sit down and try to move those things forward, it didn't happen, which is fine. I spent a lot of time meditating and reflecting about how the brand is going to move from here and what I'm going to do to make it better. So back to our normally scheduled content, and today I bring an awesome ink article by Nicholas Sonnenberg. Three tools to repair a damaged business relationship. Dr. Patty Ann was another contributor to this article, and the advice is incredibly powerful. Now this article only says business relationships. However, really, we're talking about relationships, whether it's friends, family, acquaintances, business partners, really anything. So. There's a lot to be said in this article, and they give some really strong points. The one I want to talk to a lot, the, there's a couple of facets about... Dr. Patian focuses primarily on communication. It's incredibly important that we are actively talking to each other to build that relationship. However, you don't want to be driving, you know, you don't want to be having this conversation and not be driving your ship. You really want to be aware of what you're trying to do and not just talking. It's very easy for us to get caught in our emotions and all of a sudden say things that are not only not going to help move the, move the relationship further, they're probably going to hurt it. I know I've spent many nights thinking why did he say that or spending so much time wondering what would make him say that or her and I never really appreciated that you could have that power on someone as well. There are a couple of really important questions to ask yourself before saying something. And one of the ones I like most is, does this have to be said? Now, in that moment, most times it's going to be like, of course this has to be said, that's why it's there. But you want to pull back and really ask yourself, we're trying to clear communication, we're trying to rebuild trust. Does the statement I'm trying to say actually help? And if it feels real strong, it probably means it won't help and it'll only distract from further building the relationship. So be very mindful about what you're going to say. And I mean, to take it to the ne next level, you probably shouldn't be saying that much at all. You should be listening as actively as possible. Pay attention to them. Hear what they're trying to say and try to better understand where they're coming from. Um, you want to have a real understanding of the environment so that way you guys can build trust on a level playing field. Dr. Patty Ann really shows her expertise when she gives some powerful advice in regards to what you're talking about and how to think about it. Two that I know I will be, the two that really caught me off guard and I know that I've made the mistake many times not realizing it. My goal is always to be radically honest and with radical honesty a lot of things are said that may not actually help and they like to be put under the umbrella of, well, it's truth, so that's acceptable. Again, if the goal is to build a better relationship and open an honest trust, that's probably not the best route. If you say something that offends someone or upsets someone or triggers them emotionally, they're no longer able to hear what you're really saying. And the goal is to be heard, to be understood. Dr. Patty Ann gives us two things that we should really consider whenever speaking to make sure that we don't accidentally distract or offend the person we're trying to build trust with. Those two are culture and sensitivities. Let's start with sensitivities first. We all know that certain things offend us more easily than others, and we also know that we can mentally take a hold of our emotions and know that we shouldn't be offended and, and put them down. But let's be honest with ourselves. If we're in the middle of a conversation and we're offended, we're either going to be offended and move forward, or we're going to be distracted from the conversation and not be able to pay attention to them while we're actively trying to remove the emotions from the conversation. How often do you actually intend to hurt someone's feelings? I think it's important to be mindful that we all have our own sensitivities. However, if it's not a personal sensitivity, we don't seem to care or pay any attention or put any real effort into it. Well, I believe that's a fatal error. You really want to know the people you're around and their sensitivities so that way you can coexist with them and move the relationship forward without unnecessarily or unintentionally offending them. Now, the other is culture. Culture can be both easy and hard. Think for a moment 
the religion that you grew up in, the neighborhood, the town, the type of music, the year, what generation you are. All of these things are cultural definitions, and I'm willing to say that a lot of the words that you pick are because they aptly describe who you are culturally. I would imagine that if we asked someone else their list, it would probably be different. Their culture would be different. Well, that's really important. Our minds want to convey messages. However, our emotions are really attached to our culture and what we feel and think. And this goes right back to distraction. The goal is to stay focused and concentrating on the conversation at hand and moving it forward. And any time that you challenge your emotions or your emotional intelligence, you're also challenging your discipline. It's very important to be mindful of both culture and sensitivity when talking with any business partner. Remember, our intention is always to make people feel better and make things grow. However, in our actions and our words, they can definitely be misunderstood. It's on us. I've always felt that it was on the earnest of the speaker to make sense, not for the listener. And by that I'm saying, when I convey a message to someone, it is on my shoulders to use the words and the language and the referential information to allow the person listening to understand what I'm saying. He can't be a mind reader, he doesn't know my whole life, he doesn't know my whole culture, and I can only know so much of his. So if I'm trying to convey a message, I make very sure to really consider what the message is, the outcome I'm looking for, and how to best present it. And last but not least is, you need to have a high level of emotional intelligence. It's incredibly important. Uh, all of these tactics are useful and only if you use them. And here's the thing, just because you're using them in a conversation doesn't mean the other person is. And now all of a sudden they've hit your sensitivities and they've upset your culture. And now you're upset and you're angry. And originally we were just trying to convey a message and communicate and move on with happiness. And now it's seeming to be a fight or an argument. Well, that's really about you. You got upset. You let the argument keep going. You cannot underexpress the importance of emotional intelligence. Only by staying calm can you weather the storm, whether it's in you or in the person you're talking with. What's most important is that you move forward, keep conveying the message, and rebuild trust. We're all trying to grow, we're all trying to be good people, and none of us are trying to hurt, steal, or cheat. But misunderstandings happen. Don't let them ruin your success, and don't let them ruin your relationships. Have a great day, and thanks for joining me. Let's go.